earnings conference call hosted by Morgan Stanley. This event is not for members of the press. If you are a member of the press, please disconnect and reach out separately. For important disclosures, please see the Morgan Stanley Disclosure website at www.morganstanley.com forward slash research disclosures. Please note that this call and your questions will be recorded and may, in certain circumstances, be distributed to clients and or made publicly available. By participating in this event, you consent to such recording, distribution and publication. All participants' lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. I'll now hand over to your host, Mr. Subramanian Ayer from Morgan Stanley to begin. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Charlie. Hello, everyone. This is Subramanian Ayer from Morgan Stanley. Thank you very much for joining us for the Bajaj Finance Learning discuss the Q3 FY23 results. To discuss the results, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Rajiv Jain, Managing Director, Mr. Sandeep Jain, Chief Financial Officer, and other senior members of the management team. Uh, thanks, Rajiv and Sandeep, for giving us the opportunity to host you. So without further ado, I now invite Rajiv to take us through the key financial highlights for the quarter, post which we will open, up, open the floor for Q&A. With that, over to you, Rajiv. Thank you, Subhu. Thank you, Morgan Stanley. Good evening to all of you, or good morning, depending on the geography. I have, along with Sandeep here, I have Atul Jain, who is the Managing Director of BHFL, Anup Saha, Deputy CEO of BFL, and, and a few other colleagues from the company. Uh, I'll jump right in uh, to the to the uh, uh, to the investor presentation that is uploaded uh, in the investor section of our website. Uh, jumping on very quickly, I'll try and speak for 20 odd minutes, and from there on, then we can take on questions. Uh, jumping right on to uh, panel number four, overall a good quarter, I would say across all financial and portfolio metrics, uh, albeit uh, marginally lower AUM growth. Uh, on track overall to deliver 52, 53,000 crores uh, of core AUM growth in FI23. Uh, that leaves only one quarter left. Uh, so far, the growth has been around 39 or 1,000 crores of core AUM uh, growth. Uh, Q3 uh, clearly witnessed highest ever loans booked and new customer addition, and I'll talk about it in, uh, in the next panel. Um, in terms of going fully digital, uh, now we have 31 million consumers on the app in terms of net installs. Uh, phase two of consumer app has tried to now go live uh, in sprints. Uh, on track, both on app and web to fully go digital by March 23. Uh, some quick stats, AUM grew 27% to 2 lakh, just a tad below 2 lakh 31,000 growth. Outputs to NII uh, came in at 34.7, um, and I'll talk about it as we, uh, two panels later. That came in just a tad below 3,000 crores at 2,973, year-on-year growth of 40%. ROE at 24, just a tad below 24% uh, uh, on an annualized basis, and net NPA at 41 basis points. So, as, as I said, uh, good quarter on financial and uh, portfolio metrics for the company. Uh, diving deep in, uh, on panel number five, uh, core AUM growth was 12,476 crores, uh, slightly shorter, mainly due to in the mortgage side of the business, uh, due to intense pricing pressures. Uh, so uh, predominantly, uh, the growth was slower on account of uh, slower mortgage disbursements, and I'll cover that when we talk BHFL. Uh, AUM 27% we talked about. New loans came in at 7.84 million. Uh, last year, same, same time, we had booked 7.44 7 million. Uh, P2P disbursements were 16,026 crores on a year-on-year -year basis, up 6%. Uh, uh, October was pretty good for B2B, for uh, you know, consumer discretionary. November, December, uh, the demand slowed down significantly. So far, January, first 27 days, 26 days of the month, is looking much better. Uh, in terms of new customer addition, we added first time we crossed 3 million customers and added 3.14 million customers in a quarter. Overall, it looks like we started the year thinking we'll do 9 to 10 million. It looks like we'll cross 11 million new customers uh, in the current year. Uh, customer franchise, 66 million. We'll probably end anywhere between 68 and a half to 269 million customer franchise ending March. Uh, location, clearly, we are present in, where out of 140-odd crore population, we are currently present in 110-odd crore uh, um, coverage. We added 29 locations. Um, with forecasted, we'll grow, we'll probably add 400 locations. It looks like we'll probably add 250, 300, only in the current year. Uh, competitive intensity, I've talked about this, this point for, um, uh, for last three, four quarters, remains highly elevated. Uh, everybody 
seems to want to do retail uh, between growth and margin. Uh, margin takes precedence. Uh, that's our fundamental view uh, uh, at, a, at a management philosophy level. So we continue to protect, which is evident in point number nine. So cost of funds went up, you know, uh, was 7.14. It increased by 23 basis points, but the overall NIMS uh, uh, didn't go, uh, remain flat. It didn't, it didn't dilute. So that's the principal point that we are that we are making. That between growth and margin, uh, choose margin. Uh, we of course want to grow. We are a growth-oriented business. Uh, we want to grow well. But between choosing between the two, the choice is clearly on margin, uh, because it creates a greater sustainability of business from a long-term standpoint. Uh, liquidity buffer was strong at just a tad below 13,000 crores. Um, given the overall strong ALM management, as you can see, uh, the pass-through, even in cost of funds, is very gradual. Uh, quarter 2 to 3 was uh, 23. Before that, it was another 20-odd basis points. In the first nine months of the year, the total increase is 45 basis points, I think. So uh, given that we run a longer our uh, liability maturity is longer than the asset maturity. Uh, we'll continue to see a uh, uh, lot more gradual pass through on cost of funds as we uh, move along even into the next year. Uh, deposits book, uh, uh, slower in the last quarter versus the first two quarters. We clearly took a lot more aggressive stand. Uh, um, in the first two quarters, it, 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 was, it was the right thing to do, uh, but uh, we have to deploy uh, all that will originate. So uh, uh, our, our rate increases in Q3 have been slower than what it was in Q1 and Q2. Uh, having said that, the balance sheet still grew by, deposit balance sheet grew by 3,562 crores. Overall now it's 21% of the balance sheet. On a standalone basis, I think it's 28% of the balance sheet. Um, and we are we're very clear on a console basis, it will be 25% of the balance sheet sometime in the medium term. And I am uh, grew 24%. Uh, actually, actual growth was 28%. Last year in Q3, uh, IPO financing was at the peak, and the company earned during that period 203 crores of IPO financing, which of course since then has been discontinued from April 1 based on due to regulation. Uh, so uh, adjusted on a core basis, uh, the NIM growth was actually 28% uh, versus the real number that you're seeing at 24%, and that will become evident as Q4 uh, gets done. Uh, OPEX to NI improved. We're beginning to see some level of operating leverage emerge, uh, move, move down from 35.9 to 34.7. As the core balance sheet starts to build up uh, quarter after quarter with a similar kind of product mix, uh, we should start to see some level of uh, uh, you know, operating leverage emerge. Uh, it'll still be marginally higher than it was at pre-COVID level. Let me just flag that as well. Uh, Q4, we are reasonably comfortable that we'll be able to sustain these metrics. Uh, as we get into next year, we'll, we'll, uh, it will be lower than the current year. We're clear about that. Uh, I think next year, uh, so we have peaked on, uh, on, on building out the operating expenses, uh, you know, investments frame. Uh, and as the balance sheet builds out, we should see improvement uh, on that. Loan losses by 841 crores, 1.4 to 1.5 percent of average assets. We continue to hold 1,000 crores of management overlay for uncertainties at this point in time. Uh, GNP and NPA um, were uh, lowest, uh, when I say lowest, I think we were lower than that only when we were 13,000 crores of balance sheet in 2013. Sorry? And six months NPA class. And it was six months NPA classification. So clearly lowest, lowest ever uh, that we've been in the last 16 years. Uh, uh, and as Sandeep is saying, classification is different. Uh, came in at 114 and 41 basis points. Uh, stage two down, stage three marginally up. Um, as, and, and as you can see, balance sheet is built out, uh, building out, but uh, it's up by 780 odd crores. Uh, all portfolios are green, including the AF portfolio now. Uh, product mix was steady across uh, all different nine verticals that we publish across B2B, B2C, and so on and so forth. Um, consolidated profit after tax we talked about. Capital adequacy remained pretty strong. Tier 1 capital was in 23.3%. Uh, uh, employee count stood at 40,708. We added, I think, 1,500, uh, 1,600, 1,400. 39 employees in between Q2 and Q3 uh, across the three companies. Um, 
Uh, you're aware we disclosed it to the street, point number 23, that we've taken a 41.5% stake in Snapwork Technologies to strengthen our technology roadmap. BHFL, where, as I said earlier, the uh, the quarter was a little slower, uh, uh, approvals grew 14% at 214,514 crores. Um, disbursements were 7,429, uh, as again 7,000. Uh, just a dad below 8,000 crores in uh, Q3 last year. Uh, it was in the quarter a degrowth, but overall AUM is still up 33% on a on a nine month basis uh, to 66,000 crores. Uh, uh, portfolio composition uh, pretty steady between 61% of the balance sheet is home loan balance sheet and so on and so forth. Uh, cost of funds increased by 49 basis points. Uh, the entire balance sheet is uh, principally variable. Uh, so the pass through um, uh, has happened uh, equally. So to that extent, uh, this balance sheet is protected from interest rate. Uh, risk. Uh, liquidity buffer was quite strong, uh, as you are expecting stronger disbursements. But uh, so, as you can see, liquidity buffer remained uh, pretty strong. They are well capitalized. Borrowing mix is, was steady. Uh, OPEX to NIA came in at 24 and a half percent. There's improvement because name has expanded. Uh, loan losses uh, were down 50 percent YOY. Uh, uh, BHFL also holds a management overlay of 242 odd crores. Uh, they are clearly the lowest risk uh, business in India in terms of mortgages. The gross NP is at 20, uh, uh, 23 basis points and 10 basis points, uh, net NPA. So by far, as for that scale, it's not amongst the lowest uh, risk balance sheet in India uh, with a 61% home loan uh, business. Uh, stage two assets. Uh, hardly anything to talk about given the uh, given the number stage three assets uh, at 135 crore. So uh, BFSL added 77,000. So pretty other than disbursements, uh, which was slow, and as a result, AUM growth was slow. Uh, I would say uh, quarter for uh, BHFL was also good on all financial metrics, uh, other than the uh, disbursement and corresponding AUM growth, uh, which. We are hopeful between Q4 and Q1 uh, uh, should come back to growth as well. Uh, BFSL added 77,000 customers, 24 locations. They've got branches in now. It added six locations uh, in Q3 alone. Uh, it lent the year with 30 odd locations as BFSL. We uh, did a significant upgrade to the app and the web platform, added 45 uh, new features. We'll be adding another between 55 and 60 new features in Q4 as well and the asset should be a lot more uh, solid and uh, uh, strong as we exit Q4 uh, or the current fiscal to significantly grow this, the BFSL as a business in the next fiscal. MTF book, which is our course proposition we bring to the table, um, continues to grow and profit came in at three crores. Last year, they also had a similar uh, benefit, uh, like we had IPO financing benefit on account of uh, uh, you know, IPO uh, allocation. Uh, they had a seven crore one time profit sitting in there. Uh, they had counted as a fine in 32 people. So that's really the quarter in, in, in substance uh, in terms of financials and uh, growth metric. Omnipresence very quickly. Uh, you know, I'll just jump right in just in interest of time to, uh, as I said, uh, we'll, we'll fully go live across web and app by uh, March 23. So I'll not cover point num page number 10 and 11, but just cover the, the metrics that we published. Uh, so locations will be will be a little short. We'll probably do 300-odd uh, locations in the current year, say 400, 450. That's why you see yellow there. Uh, Otherwise, on, on downloads, net installs, in-app program, uh, we are looking super green. Top five in uh, financial domain in Play Store, we are, we are right, right there in top five. Uh, um, service requests are growing uh, quarter on quarter, 20 to 25%. So significant improvement in service metrics as a result of us going. Um, so this is of all the service requests raised, of all service requests uh, uh, that customer makes, uh, now 23%, 22% of them are coming through the app uh, and are migrating to app. We foresee that this number in the medium term could probably go to 40, 45%. Uh, wallet accounts uh, uh, is the only one which is yellow. Otherwise, UP handles, bill pay transactions, we are, we are, we are, we are fully green. 18 million rewards we issued in the quarter. 
uh, QR deployment is now started to gather pace. Uh, uh, we, we are now adding seven and a half to eight thousand uh, merchant QRs on a daily basis. Uh, we foresee that in the current quarter, we'll probably add uh, just a tad below half a million new merchant QRs because the entire functionality and the infrastructure went live in November. We tested that in December. Currently, we are adding anywhere between seven and a half to eight thousand uh, merchant QRs on a daily basis. Uh, so we. We expect to start becoming visible um, uh, as a at the point of sale uh, 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 universally uh, in the next fiscal. So what we have done to the app this year, uh, from nowhere we've become top five in terms of downloads uh, and monthly downloads now are on an average, you know, uh, five, yeah, between five million to six million. Uh, we. We intend to do that for the payments business from a merchant QR standpoint in the next fiscal. Uh, let me uh, move. Oh. Panel, let's go to panel. Uh, yeah, these, these are all green, as you can see there. Uh, customer franchise matrix, this is a panel that we published in the second quarter. Clearly, you can see that as the franchise grows, uh, 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 despite the franchise growing, the profit per customer and AUM per customer continues to grow. Now that's the acquire and cross sell strategy, uh, and this is uh, so uh, we remain confident that for, that it that despite growing franchise, we don't foresee that our AUM per customer, pad per customer, will get compromised in any given manner. Uh, this. Uh, uh, you know, from now on, uh, fourth quarter of, you know, with the third quarter results, we'll start to publish to the street. Uh, in general, a, a long-range strategy update uh, uh, on a rolling basis. Uh, we as a company have been doing this for 13 years. We thought time has come from a maturity standpoint to start to publish that to investors as well. So what you see is a very quick abridged version of what we do. Let me just, given that we're talking about it for the first time, this is on panel 16, uh, what do we do uh, uh, as part of what we call long-range strategy? It's an annual five-year rolling strategy plan with an execution plan of 12 to 24 months. Uh, we uh, look at the macro uh, as part of the rolling framework, uh, look at the industry outlook, look at the technology mega trends, look at business mega trends, uh, select a benchmark company uh, to learn from, and create a bottoms-up financial plan. It's a highly institutionalized and rigorous process and involves the top 500 people in the company on an annual basis for a 45 to 50 day period. And we've been doing it for the last 13 years. Uh, so we thought we'll start to, given the maturity of the company, time has come for us to start to update that to uh, to the investors as well. Uh, very quickly, uh, it's weaved around a basic construct. Uh, basic construct of the company is on six key pillars. What is our ambition as a company? What is our strategy as a company? What is our approach as a company? What is the philosophy around which we have built a business? And what do we expect our market share and profit share to be as a company uh, uh, in this country? If you go to ambition, clearly ambition is to be a, a leading payments and financial service company have 100 million consumers. We'll end this year with 70 million consumers, as I said earlier. 3% uh, of payment GMV, 3 to 4% of total credit, and 4 to 5% of retail credit. That's clearly the ambition for us as a company from a long-range um, uh, standpoint. Strategy is to be an omnipresent financial service company. Wherever the consumer goes, goes to branch, goes to app, goes to web, goes to social, uh, goes for rewards, and eventually goes virtual. Uh, we want to be omnipresent, uh, offering all our products and services. Approach simple, has remained simple for the last 13 years, acquire and cross-sell across all assets and liabilities and broking products to consumers, small business, commercial and rural consumers in India, across all consumer platforms. Philosophy, build business with a 10-year view. We are very clear financial services are built with a 10-year view and deliver through, cycle, through the cycle 19 to 21% shareholder returns. You've done that adjusted for COVID, done that successfully for the last 12-13 uh, years, and we intend to continue to do that. We think because of our construct has helped us deliver that uh, at, a, at a design level because we take a longer term view on building out businesses, helps us anchor our business much more uh, strongly. The market share, uh, clearly among the top five in every respective product that we're in. That's the ambition at a design level, and profit share to be among the top most, you know, um, 20 most profitable companies in India, and five to six most 
profitable financial service companies in India on a sustainable basis really the frame uh, is. That's the construct. Now, if you take that construct and say what does that convert into strategy from a rolling standpoint is really what you see on the next panel. Um, we see industry growing uh, from it grew the past data is factual, the next data is our forecast. Uh, like everybody's right to forecast, you have a right to forecast. Uh, uh, our forecast is in the total credit will grow from 149 lakh crore to 237 lakh crore and grow by 12 and a half percent CAGR over the next five year period. Mm. This is the panel that you see, panel 20. Uh, this is the overall retail mix of India. Uh, largely steady over the last 10 years, we foresee that not to change. Uh, when we look at it, we find that, uh, and we do know that for a while, uh, that we are not there in 28% of retail credit categories at a fundamental level, which is auto, CVs, and agri, which is what you see penciled in here at 16, 8, and 4, if you take FI23 estimates. Ooh. So that's, that's really where we see the market headed, uh, where we see the forecast from a retail mix standpoint. From a mega trend standpoint, what you see in this panel, panel 21, is these are 15 mega trends at a management level we've identified that we're investing in. Across India stack, platforms, products, and technology, these are the 15 areas. They'll go through, uh, uh, the mega trends don't change, but they, they get versionized uh, over time. So clearly we see in India stack, account aggregator to be one of the big game-changing moments for retail financial services the way we see. On platforms, we see 500 million Indians are on social platforms. We think it's a, it's a big game-changer. Uh, we think rewards is a big frame when we look at uh, leading companies which are in retail business. Uh, and so on. We think pre-owned, given where prices of new products have gone to, at a design level from digital products to motorcycles to cars, is a very, thematically a very big uh, um, change as you move from here. And in technology, AR has become becoming consumerized, it's become real. Uh, vernacular and voice is really how the rural consumer is engaging uh, with any of the companies who are in, um, who are deeper into India. So these are the 15 mega trends uh, that we've identified and we'll provide a update on this every, uh, at the end of every third quarter on an annual basis. If we take all these three, uh, the strategic constructs, any retail business organized as products, geography, platforms, horizontals. You know, this is really where any retail business organized. I'm not going to get into detail, but clearly on products, the intent is to be among the top five players in each product line. Uh, on geography, we are already in 4,000, just a tad below 4,000 cities in India. Uh, so far, our strategy was where TV, there FinServe. We are now saying wherever there's FinServe, all products of Insurf should be there or, uh, or or Bajaj Finance should be there. On platforms, clearly build out social and rewards. Mm, the way we built out app and web over the last uh, two and a half years, build on the foundation of that and uh, build that out as big over the next 18 odd months as we built out app and web to be. On horizontals, clearly STP across all products. As we go fully digital, we need more and more and more STP uh, on service, FPC, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, continue to, as we grow larger in size, continue to diversify library profile. And on subsidiaries, leverage our platforms to drive to originate mortgages and broken accounts for subsidiaries. 12 to 15% of their business, we think, um, uh, of retail mortgages and 20 to 25% of broken accounts uh, would or should uh, come from us as we, uh, uh, as we take a five-year view. Uh, and we will... Uh, and we'll, we'll build this out as we uh, deliver this. What that means from an execution standpoint is we will, we will launch, uh, you see, I don't have to go through it. It's, it's mentioned in a very clear uh, terms, uh, but we took a view that we were so far used to do lap only in, uh, in uh, Bajaj Housing Finance. But as we came to conclusion that as we build out MSME, uh, it's one of the core products, so BHFL would also do and BFL would also do. When we looked at uh, external market benchmarking, we found that uh, 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 one of the lead largest players, which has a non-bank and a bank, uh, also always did it that way. Uh, and if you want to grow MSME, uh, then we'll probably have to take, uh, do lap in both the entities. Uh, Bajaj Plus, which is so-called Finance Plus, uh, in January, we've already rolled out, launched new autos. I think after mortgages is the lowest risk category, uh, makes less money, but we've invested last 
four years in building out used cars. We are among the top top four five monthly originators of used cars. We think on the back of that, and given that. Of the total outstandings in India of mall of auto loans, uh, 33% sits on our current franchise of 70 million, uh, and. The experience that we are having with two-wheeler open architecture, we launched the business in June. Uh, we are already now originating eight to nine thousand open architecture uh, two-wheeler loans. Gives us significant confidence that we can build out a uh, a uh, a, uh, a business uh, in the new PV loans as well. Uh, MFI, uh, given how deep we have gone into India, uh, uh, is is a business that we launch in a phased manner in in Q4 and Tractor in Q1. uh in the on the commercial side emerging corporate business in in q3 uh b2b on qr and edc in q4 and so on and so forth so that's really the uh, uh 8 mega trends out of 15 that i showed you we would do in fi24 and balance level in fi25 so that's the sum and substance just of it uh, we'll start to provide what that means on a rolling basis is that um, it at least our forecast says that four and a half years from now we'll have 110 to 120 million con, uh, consumers franchise we'll have cross sell franchise of 65 to 70 million uh, india payment gmv uh, versus our 3% ambition would be between 1 and 1.25 share of total rate would be between 2 and a half to 2.75 you can see the numbers there they are largely self explanatory uh, profit per customer would continue to move in 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 in, in tandem and uh, aum per customer should continue to grow uh, uh, in line with nominal gdp um, and return on equity should continue to sustain so we we thought that that's really what we'll share with you uh, as i said on panel 25 we'll start to share uh along with q3 results every year from here on the process for us starts in october every year as a company and ends in december uh that's the quarter uh, last point as uh my team is reminding me panel 59 composition remains steady 6 to 5 8 to 7 uh 2020 so on and so forth uh, as i've always said between 1 and 2% plus minus uh, that's really where as you can see because mortgages are slower for the quarter the mix from sorry actually aum disbursements were slower mortgages on aum basis went up actually from 32 to 33 last point you know uh, and part of it is is a is a is a uh, is a point that it's important i make that we originate customers through our b2b business balance sheet stack is now down to 9% so the seasonality that used to exist at a particular point in time in q3 and q1 for us increasingly uh, has gone away and the contribution of b2b as a balance sheet business will keep going down it's possible sitting here next year the 9% number which looked like 10% last year uh, same time may look like 8% it's very much possible because balance sheet is becoming shorter and shorter churn is higher and higher it would continue to generate disproportionately high customers to whom we excel in cross selling you know that's really what we do um, that's how we have created business model so increasingly you will not see uh, 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 you know q3 or q1 which is really where b2b at a point in time when this contribution used to be 14 15% we would see uh, swings the swings will not be there um, in fact if i take the reverse point that the q2 balance sheet grew faster q2 the balance sheet grew 14700 odd crores in q3 is gone only 12700 crores so uh, that seasonality effect in the balance sheet mix is largely gone away it's an important point that i thought i'll anchor uh rest i think we are fine on portfolio metrics uh happy to take questions between me and some of my senior colleagues thank you very much we will now begin the q and a session if you'd like to ask a question please press star followed by 1 on your telephone keypad now if you change your mind please press star followed by 2 to withdraw your question when preparing to ask a question please ensure your phone is unmuted locally as a reminder that star followed by 1 on your telephone keypad now Our first question comes from Piran Engineer of CLSA. Piran, your line is open. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, and congrats on the good set of numbers. Uh, just a couple of questions. Firstly, uh, uh, you know, earlier this month in Davos, uh, Mr. Bajaj said that uh, Bajaj Fin is looking to hire three to four thousand engineers. It was a CNBC interview. I, I don't know whether he was referring to Bajaj Finance or FinServ, uh, but just wanted to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, what the strategy is out there. Because it seems to be a slightly larger number in context of the fintechs that are out there. Yeah. So we are we we have hired already for the current year 650 engineers from from colleges. Just to give you texture on the freshers just being hired by us as BFL in uh, in uh, um, so. Um, so I don't know. Uh, um, so I can talk for BFL, uh, and clearly I'm sure that must be happening for uh, uh, other group companies as well. Uh, we've hired 650 odd engineers as freshers. Last year we hired 300. The year before we hired 150. So uh, clearly we do foresee the next year we will be hiring 1,000 odd people, and that gets decided in 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 June because we go to campuses in August. Uh, uh, from engineering colleges standpoint, so I'm um, uh, we as BFL. Okay, so from our just special assistant for PRP. Yeah. Okay, okay, that 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 makes sense. Uh, secondly, just uh, and not related to the quarter, uh, but when I look at you know the insure, I'm just trying to understand what sort of uh, fee income potential is out there from insurance cross sell, uh, and then when we see the commission income you all earn from Bajaj Life and Bajaj General, it's only 25 30 crores annually. So, uh, am I reading this data wrong in terms of you know? Uh, uh, you know, is there more in terms of what can be done here? Because it seems to be a very small number. Uh, so, Piran, uh, you're only referring to life insurance business. I think there is health insurance business, there's general insurance business, there's extended warranty, etc. All these products carry different uh, uh, commission structures, and uh, they do contribute significantly in terms of overall financial outcome. So that's what uh, is the reply. And we are open architecture? We are open architecture. We are now work now. with 27 insurance companies. Uh, we work with nine. We work in now nine already. Uh, we can do tie-up with 18 more uh, insurance companies. But would you be willing to just share broadly what sort of fee income you learn annually from insurance cross like overall, out of all your tie-ups? As I said, uh, they do contribute materially to the overall numbers. Uh, we have not disclosed it uh, separately. Uh, we'll see if there's a possibility for us to disclose separately in the annual report. Okay, fair enough. And just lastly, can you cross-sell a DBS credit card to an RBL customer and vice versa? Or no. is the contract that once you go in, he does the customer is locked with that? Yeah, uh, Manish is answering. Yeah. Sorry, Manish, you were as a governance principle, we do not cross-sell a DBS co-brand to an RBL and, and vice versa. Okay. However, if the customer has closed his card on either side, on either side, then as a governance period yes. after a cooling period, then, then governance after a particular cooling period, it is then allowed to be cross-sold the other card. But we do not do it while the uh, while the card is still uh, alive. That's the governance principle that we apply. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ashish Sharma of ANAM Asset Management. Ashish, your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Rajiv, a uh, fabulous uh, update on the LRS. Uh, just just uh, one question on LRS. So, uh, as per the strategy, uh, we would want to do everything organic or is inorganic also part of uh, uh, this, this whole uh, long-range plan? We build okay. businesses, Great. all organic. Perfect. Uh, second question would be on the BHFL. So you mentioned about the competitive intensity. Uh, just also wanted to get some perspective on uh, uh, on on the, uh, I mean, how the demand has sort of panned out given that there has been a, a, a very very uh, sharp increase in interest rates. I mean, the home loan rates. So it's only competitive intensity, or there also has been some sort of a, uh, some impact on the demand because interest rates have moved so rapidly. So I'm looking at the, you know, in the alcohol, looking at um, 
RBI data, if I'm not mistaken, which is published, if I take a nine-month data, that shows the housing loan, including priority sector loans, growth is only 9%, 8.89%, if I'm not mistaken. I think that, that's really what I saw the number to be, if, I, if my memory uh, corrects me, if, if memory is correct. So clearly, mm, uh, nine-month view looks like a 9% all ki odd kind of number at this point in uh, times in terms of um, addition. Uh, rest, Atul can add on. Uh, right. So, competitive intensity and that also is fueled by, you know, a lot of rate increase. As of now, on the primary sales, because uh, the market has two parts, primary and secondary, which is a, a balance transfer on the primary. In the primary side, in the demand, we have not seen any significant downturn uh, of the rate, rates catching up. Uh, on the secondary side, uh, given the rate increases happening at a regular side, there is a, a bit of a compression. So, not on the primary side, but in the secondary side, there is a compression. Okay. And as, as, as we said, as we said, we have to choose our bets in terms of uh, uh, how do we price. And mind you, we only do salary. Uh, we don't do uh, okay. self-employed uh, mortgages. So in fact, in home loans also, it's the most intensely <laughs> competitive space. Uh, everybody wants uh, because self-employed home loans are, in our assessment, not priced. Uh, uh, for risk, so it is the most intense part of uh, home loans that we are competing in or continue to compete in. So you know, a quarter here and quarter there really doesn't bother us, but uh, don't want to lose margin. Whatever is little is there in the home loan business. <laughs> uh, any which way. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just lastly, on on uh, this performance of uh, operating costs being lower than the revenue, uh, I mean, you 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 expect that that can, we can sustain now, given that we've already done uh, yeah. our investments, and uh, I mean now I think uh, uh, there's just one some color on on that, Rajiv. Yeah. yeah. So as I said, Q4 we will sustain uh, from a guidance standpoint. Um, uh, largest part of our OPEX lines are salary increases, so on and so forth, uh, new hiring, new, so as we, as you build out, we'll provide an outlook by, for next year, by Q4, uh, Ashish, you know. But we're clearly seeing operating leverage emerge. That is super clear. Uh, where will it anchor? I think by, by, by end of Q4, we'll provide guidance on that as well for next fiscal. Perfect, uh, Rajiv. Thank you, and all the best for the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Abhishek Muraka of HSBC. Abhishek, your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Rajiv and team. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on this long-range strategy. Uh, a conversion to a bank is not part of it, how are you thinking about that as part of a long range? Because if you get to 100, 110 million customers, you would already be among the largest uh, out there. So how are you thinking about the conversion to a bank? Yeah, uh, I said this in uh, in our um, in our AGM in July, Abhishek, uh, there's no plan to convert into a bank. Um, in a reasonably uncluttered manner, let me make a point <laughs> again. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that that's as uncluttered as I can get, or as clear as I can get. There's no plan to be uh, a bank, and uh, we foresee that even these numbers get us to be uh, smaller than the current largest non-bank, just about there, at today's level. Uh, I'm talking four and a half years forward, yeah. you know. So, uh, so uh, if, uh, and uh, our gross NPA and NPA sustained performance over long periods of time does not give us any kind of, uh, poses any kind, and if you continue to manage the business as well as you've done over the last 10 years, does not create any kind of mm -hmm. reason for us to get back. So, you know, these numbers don't, um, uh, don't assume a bank, and we don't plan. Got it, got it. Sure, sure. And the second one is uh, again, you know, in your long range plan, you said you'll do lap or uh, lap in both BFL, BHFL, and roughly modeled on the business model followed by somebody else. What will be the difference again? Will it be like a con customer profile difference, or will it be similar? 
No, it's very sim it's similar, uh, except, you know, okay, so let's just step back for a moment. The business loan business of ours, we are amongst the, we are 22, 23% as per bureau data. And when I say market share I talked about, I am talking on a run. We we only look at verifiable source. We are interested. Either it's a RBI data, which is uh, this is, but that's a aggregate credit data. If I otherwise, in product lines, the only data that we're relying on is bureau data. That if bureau says how many loans are booked as consumer durable loan over trend line on a long term sustainable basis. If I take so business loans booked in India on a on a mm -hmm. one quarter lag basis that shows that 21 to 23 percent of the loans business booked as business loans in india is is with us okay they're all uh, small businesses or professionals uh, when we look at the msme sector in india that market is 23 and a half lakh crores the business loan market of that is only four percent if we want to dominate and we want to be leading player in MSME space, we came to a conclusion that just VSFL doing that will not be sufficient. And uh, that business of ours is a lot more B2B. We are very, very strong from a uh, uh, deep geography. Distribution is very, very strong. We have sustainably, uh, the only two players in India who have done business zone for the last 15 years, never shutting it. And we are, we are one of those. Uh, we gives us uh, very high credibility with the distribution ecosystem. So I think uh, we already, as I said, started it. I think it's starting to move with all guns blazing already. So, uh, and uh, Atul is here on the call. In fact, he is a big votary of the fact that the market is very, very large. You know, that, that the BHFL can continue to gather and we can continue to gather without any kind of... Uh, uh, a compromise or conflict in any given manner uh, um, uh, on the loan against property business. And again, premium price, uh, priced, priced at a priced and market basis, uh, uh, adjusted to emerging markets priced differently from uh, tier two markets priced differently from tier one markets. We offer business loan in 2000 cities in India. Yeah, plus a level of product differentiation in terms of, um, you know, uh, that's, that's, okay. Perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, and uh, just a last question, in your fees and commission expenses, now that has declined QOQ, whereas your new loans booked and customer acquisition and sequential AUM growth, all of those has, have been pretty strong. So how do we think about this? Is it that you're doing something yourselves or through the app and therefore you're getting some operating leverage or how should we think about this time? So Abhishek, uh, we are in dash based accounting. So the origination cost doesn't sit in OPEX, right? That get amortized along with the income. Yeah. So what you see a large portion of that is recovery commission as the portfolio quality continues to improve, the recovery commission has come down actually. So that's the reason. More and more okay. Oh. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And all the best for the quote. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, if you wish to submit a question, please press star followed by one on your telephone keypad. And please limit yourself to two questions so we can complete the queue. Our next question comes from Harshvardhan Agrawal of IDFC Mutual Fund. Harshvardhan, your line is open. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So can you please uh, uh, tell us uh, what are the rate hikes that you have taken across products uh, apart from home loans? If, if you have taken that, and what's the broad quantum of it? Quantum uh, would be... Uh, uh, so as you can see, as we said, that so far we managed to uh, neutralize the impact of increasing costs of funds and uh, increasing... Um, uh, and having fees in a staggered manner, pricing as well. So in the fixed rate businesses, you would have probably so far passed through um, 67, 50, 60, yeah, depending on business to business, 50, 60, 70 basis points. I mean, um, you know, sure. uh, that's how, uh, um, I mean, it would differ to business by business, differ on our, uh, uh, differ on our level of competitiveness in the business, differs on our moat in the business. So, uh, Quantum would be hard to um, to 
so the variable price business would have got completely repriced in line with uh, market rate. Uh, the fixed rate businesses would see incremental repricing, which is, uh, as Rajiv said, 50 to 70 basis point depending on business to business. Uh, the impact of it Got will it. become visible over a period of time. Sure, sure. And, and sir, another question is, what percentage of our book would be PSL compliant today? PSL compliant. We don't track. Uh, in BHFL, we track. Also, we in I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, as I said, anyway, part is not to be a bank, as I told Abhishek earlier. Uh, so there's no need to track. Uh, uh, but if I tracked it, it would probably anywhere between, uh, anywhere between my senses across on a consolidated basis, 14 to 16 percent. I mean, uh, sure. If if we tracked it, last we did this exercise in uh, 20. We have not done this exercise since then. We do track it in some of mm -hmm. our alco processes in BHFL, but not in BFS. Right. And so one last question is about uh, we. You mentioned that you will be getting into MFI business and tractor financing. Now that those are like uh, uh, very competitive businesses. So what what kind of right to win we have in those areas? So look, uh, uh, so two, three things. Uh, you could ask the same question even for autos. So that we're on the same page, right? Uh, but autos, as I mentioned, uh, we have a very large existing franchise sitting. So to be fair, uh, MFI clearly, the core mode that we're looking at is we are very, very deep. We are now in, as I said, 110 odd crore penetration. There's still 30 crore coverage left. So we understand the market, we, we understand the state, understand the market, understand the local district level understanding we have, having done uh, various businesses. Uh, uh, right. That's point number one. So we we'll start with, our plan is to start with two states. I must flag one thing. None of these are going to grow overnight. As I said, we build businesses with a five to seven year view. Uh, so it will be staggered uh, 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 frame. As I said, we launched two wheeler in June. We are only in two states in India. We launched only, when I launched two wheeler open architecture in June, we have launched only uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. It's only now we are going into top 15 cities in India. So it will be a staggered frame. Business must find its feet first and then we grow. So there's no urgency. Right. When we have looked in the past or when we launched a business and when it became materially significant to balance sheet and uh, P&L, it appears to it, us that it takes anywhere between three and a half to four and a half years. By the time it becomes material, either from a profit pool standpoint or from a balance sheet standpoint. So I think it's important I flag that. We launch MFI and UP and uh, Tamil Nadu, we are looking at two states and over a period of four years build out in 10 states in India. Tractors, we, uh, sure. uh, okay, when we look at even tractors, we find there are 600,000 of our customers who have a current active tractor loan, just to give you texture. So same thing that applies for PV, uh, applies for tractor as well. Uh, so uh, MFI, I must also flag, as RBI came out with a new requirements in September, which became effective October, and when we looked at those metrics, we found that there are a, a set of loans that we do on a monthly basis in, in personal loans, cross-sell, uh, 3 to 4% of them qualify, and we started to tag them as MFI. And when we look at the performance, we come to a conclusion that there is merit in us pursuing uh, the business as well. So there is some level of experience even there, sitting there based on the new uh, RBI regulation requirements. So that's the background on uh, these three existing customer and uh, deep knowledge of the of the um, of the geography from MFI standpoint. Oh, sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Our next question comes from Kuntal Shah of Oak Lane Capital. Kuntal, your line is open. Please go ahead. Hey, hey uh, Rajiv and team. Uh, thanks for this update on LRS and credibility of building with distribution ecosystem. My questions are to uh, what is the status of credit card approval by RBI for us and NBFC in general? Where do things stand and what timelines you expect? for us to begin that business. And secondly, this quarter saw addition of only 27 location. And for 27 also, you are guiding only 600 odd addition. So are we slowing down on geographical reach or how do we read this? Uh, 
These are my two questions. Thank you. Yeah. So, credit card, you applied, Kuntal. We are waiting. Um, uh, we are hopeful, uh, is all I can say. And uh, we'll go by whatever RBI would do. They would do it for the industry in general, I would like to believe. So, uh, for the non bank PAC and based on credentials is the response on credit card, Kuntal. In terms of geography, the economics must work. Principle number one. I, I don't have to be present in all 140 crores of population in India. Uh, the economics must work. Uh, as I tell people that from uh, west of India to south of India, every 30 kilometers on the highway, we have a branch now. You know, if you stayed on the highway. Uh, this is from Gujarat to uh, the large parts of opportunity, residual part of opportunity from the population coverage and the economics would work. We principally now see only UP and Bihar and some parts of Northeast. Uh, and that's really one of the frames that you see. We foresee that in a five year horizon, we'll probably now land up opening only 445 odd locations. Let me give you a specific number. Of that 400 will actually come in UP, Bihar and Northeast. Only 45 is the gap that we see in uh, rest of India. Uh, sorry. Other than, as, as Anup is correcting me, other than MFI. So urban stroke rural business, as you know it today, uh, will have an eventual net addition from here from the next five year standpoint of four and a half years for only 445. Uh, that to 400 in uh, UP, Bihar and uh, Northeast and balance 45 are some of the blind spots in the rest of India. And as you build out MFI, it will happen. So that should give us a 123, 124 odd crore coverage at a redesign level. Uh, the bigger frame, Kuntal, from the next five years for us, from a strategic standpoint on LRSs, as I said earlier, earlier it used to be Jaha TV, Vaha Bajaj Shinsav. Now it is Jaha TV, Vaha Bajaj Shinsav, ke sare products. I think that's the, when we look at it, let me give you texture, that uh, uh, only 3% of our locations have 80% plus of our products. We know that. So, but those products gave us experience, they gave us a branch, they gave us understanding of the market, they gave us understanding of the consumer. The next step on geographic infrastructure is about in a, in a templated manner, get all our products. So uh, that's really where we are headed. Uh, uh, sometime, sometime in in maybe next year, uh, LRS update or the year after, we'll start to provide update on how some of these things are moving as well uh, to um, to to create greater degree of transparency in the process. So, but strategy is four, five, five more locations in four and a half years. But focus on jaha bajaj chinta, wana bajaj chinta ke sare products. Thank you. Our next question comes from Nishint Chawasi of Kotak. Nishint, your line is open. Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, again, uh, I think the same uh, point about you know, going into the <clears throat> below prime segments of the market. Uh, you've already focused on the prime segments and the mass affluent class. Now, I, I understand that you, you know, you by now have a reach, uh, you know, across the country, across every 30 kilometers from the highway. But uh, still, you know, this is a very different market, run with a very different mindset. Most of the companies who have been successful out here are sort of, you know, hyper local companies who have morphed into regional players. Uh, you know, these are again largely collection-based models. So, you know, how are you changing the entire business for this? I mean, is it, is it something that, that uh, you know, you are kind of trying to do it on an experimental stage or would you kind of build a completely, you know, different, uh, you know, mini enterprise within Bajaj who's going to run businesses like other MBFCs? It's a good point. It's a, it's a very good point. As the company grows larger, in fact, one of the, one of the frames of the company, and we've done that, Nishin Good, you made this point. Uh, we're coming to conclusion as we grow larger, we need to create, few of the businesses have to be paradised out. So in a way, actually, we now have, with microfinance, we'll have three paradise units in the company. The two existing paradise units in the company are actually payments business, the technology operations, business development, uh, HR uh, sits as a paradise unit 
uh, adjusted for risk uh, uh, payments has some very little risk on a fraud and so on and so forth. Some point, otherwise adjusted for risk uh, sits as a paradise unit. If you've done the same thing, and in good you raise the point, I forgot to, I missed making that point. If you go to our omnipresence update on the panel, panel number, you will see that we have actually upgraded our gold loan uh, uh, branches uh, uh, from 179, full year estimate was 225. It's at 375. By FY24, we've signed off. FY24, we'll have 650 standalone gold loan branches. So we've actually even paradise, we came to a conclusion that we need to paradise gold loan as well. So you've now paradised it out, adjusted for risk, as I said, otherwise operations, cash, mm, uh, sales, administration, uh, HR, all of that unit has been paradised out. MFI will also be paradised out. So uh, we understand fully that these, these businesses have uh, different nuances, uh, they have to be run differently. Uh, what do we bring to the table in MFI? Unfortunately, Nishchen, when I look at the industry, I still find very poor stroke, relatively poor technology adoption. And if one has to scale these businesses, they must be run on, uh, they must have significantly deeper technology adoption, is what my observer point of view is, as a practicing manager that you may, may change as we launch it. But today our view is we can bring lots greater uh, and deeper technology intervention from a last mile standpoint to the business and will be paradised out. Sure. And just one uh, one smaller one is, uh, you know, you mentioned that the festive demand was sort of, or, or whatever, the post-festive demand was sort of weak for the first two months. And uh, despite that, you had, I think, record number of client additions. Uh, you know, typically you would have the, the B2B customers sort of, you know, driving the plant addition. So how, how do we reconcile these two points? So two things, as I said, uh, so clearly deeper geography continues to add NTV customers. That's point number one. So you should 60, uh, 61, 62% of the customers continue to be existing, 38, 39% of the customers on a sustained basis. And it differs the numbers between 65, 35, uh, uh, so um, continues to be uh, digitally, I mean, continues to be NTB. That has not changed. Plus, if you go to the panel 13, you see the customers acquired digitally, EMI cards, uh, acquired digitally are already now tracking at six and a half lakhs a quarter. The number, of course, has been Q1 was, as you can see there, 522,664,000. I have to also still remind people that 60% of these customers pay a fee. Uh, so if 637,000 came, 60% of them paid a $8 fee and went. Uh, got fully underwritten, fully digital. Uh, I spend less than 100 rupees uh, 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 across all kinds of a marketing infrastructure, and 60% uh, of them pay a fee. 40% become active in a 12 month rolling basis. And balance, uh, we continue to stimulate. So that's how you should reconcile the number. Just on the demand outlook, 55% uh, of the B2B loans are now digital products means mainly phones, while laptops, etc. also are digital products, but take phones. Month on month, if you take October, September, October, November, December, if you take the IDC shipment data, continues to uh, trend downwards. Now that's the real data. I mean, you know, the shipments in India uh, on a, on a, uh, sorry, 7% degrowth, annualized 7% degrowth, yeah. and last quarter looking like 12, 13, 12 percent, yeah, 12, 13 percent. So I think, but it will recover. I think it is also coming in a high base, 21, 22, uh, uh, children are off online, everybody is online. Uh, uh, India could not buy as many laptops as it would have liked. Uh, life had to go on, so people got a lot more phones. So there will be some degree of, uh, uh, year on year averaging uh, that also one has to take into account uh, before one takes a view that is it a structural downturn or a transitory downturn. I think it's transitory. You should start to see pick up. And as I already said, Jan is looking better. Perfect. Thank you very much. Christian, it's been long time.
time me and sandeep are remembering you just on a lighter vein oh. <laughs> yes that's my nice. Thank you. Our next question comes from Krishnan Asp of HGFC Securities. Krishnan, your line is open. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi Rajiv and team. I hope I'm audible. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, this is uh, more a governance uh, query or an observation, if you will. Uh, now, I mean, clearly, you you have been setting an example. In, in, say, in, in, in all the right ways on so many financial you know, parameters. So it's a little unusual when you know you see the level of open speculation on the likely transition around KMT uh, within BFL. Uh, especially for a franchise that's been driven so scientifically, is either reflecting a complete lack of what <laughs> governance controls or it appears to be a deliberate ploy. Uh, so, I mean, it's just an observation and probably a feedback if you need. Uh, there's something maybe. Specific, Krishnan, yeah. I've not understood your point. Uh, Can you be more specific? In case there is, in case there is uh, a likely transition within BFL that you seem to be aware of at a board level, etc. I think this is ideally something that you should bring out in the, in the public domain uh, instead of letting, I mean, their pockets of speculation open up again. Okay. So uh, that's just an observation, Raju, I, I didn't when, want to. As and when we do, as and when we do, we will, as and when the board decides, uh, 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 or such discussions happen, we will, of course, let the street know. Uh, I mean, there's no discussion on uh, it at all. So there is nothing uh, for us to disclose. Great. Uh, Okay, so my second question is a little bit now to do with the I mean, business per se, and this goes back to one of the earlier queries around how do you pivot from being a mass affluent franchise to something that becomes a little more mass oriented, and what kind of risk controls you have in place in order to prepare the franchise for that? So maybe if you could just elaborate a little bit. It's horses for courses, Krishnan. Uh, uh, you know, a obviously a uh, so it's as I said, uh, it's horses for courses. Even in the businesses that we are in, somebody could argue that is gold loan a mass business or a mass affluent business. Uh, the way we run the business is our average ticket size is three x of that of what a non-bank lender runs. Uh, so we find pockets even within that. And so, because we think share of wallet eventually uh, works better than number of customers. So even within, as we get into some of these businesses, uh, we look for pockets. Now, if you take the two-wheeler financing business that we've launched in open architecture, uh, uh, we're doing at this one time more Honda than we're doing, let's say, Hero. Uh, if you, uh, it's no secret that that customer, scooter customer is better than a, uh, another uh, another mass motorcycle customer. So we tend to, at a philosophy level, identify pockets where customer has better uh, 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 behavior from a consumer standpoint, has a larger wallet uh, uh, for us to cross sell to. So that's the philosophical response to the answer. Uh, may there be such opportunities in MFI? I mean, the business to go live only in or Q3, uh, uh, so we will, as we get deeper into it, we are already in January, we'll, we'll check a view there. Otherwise, uh, for PV, PV, the industry itself has transitioned to uh, mass, super mass affluent rather. Uh, if, you, if you see the structure of the industry, the mass cars are not selling, only affluent and super affluent cars are selling. So, uh, uh, gold loan, I gave you example, two wheeler, I gave you example. So, uh, we we'll, we we look for wallets rather than look for balance sheets. Numbers. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The final question we have time for today comes from Daval Garda of DSP. Daval, your line is open. Please go ahead. 
thank you uh, for the opportunity congrats on a uh, good uh, set of numbers uh, Rajiv. so just uh, one uh, sort of question more from a clarification or understanding perspective so uh, from the lrs slide you know it sort of implies about uh, 6.3 lakh crores of aum by fy27 and about 26000 crore of profit which sort of implies uh, uh, 26 27% aum growth and 23.4% uh, profit growth uh, the question is basically you know you've given a three year uh, sort of target of uh, doubling uh, the aum which sort of again implies 26 27% aum growth and you have a long term uh, guidance on final 30 which again implies similar outcomes so normally in most companies we see that as uh, you grow in size uh, in many companies you know the growth starts uh, tapering off uh, or uh, you know size sort of comes into picture in in our case actually we seem to be you know uh, in a zone where we'll be uh, sort of uh, steady compounding for a fairly long period of time uh, what would you attribute this to is it the funding franchise which determines this is it uh, the product uh, uh, suit that uh, that is driving it i mean what what exactly is the reason for this uh, you know fairly long period of uh, compounding at a similar uh, uh, pace of growth thanks I am 10% of the loans booked in India, plus minus between 9 and 10% of loans booked in India every month, but only 3% of assets. Let me give you one single metric. If I take long-term bureau data, uh, that means just on the franchise is a gap of 7% sitting there. Uh, so one, you need full product coverage, goes back to the LRS conversation, and two, you need platforms. That's really where the investments in uh, existing in in the last two and a half years in app and web platform and in the next two years in a social and a rewards platform between products and platforms and consumers you already have we just uh, uh, and with the long-term orientation that we have just keep playing along I mean you know is all we need to do I, I don't think we need to reinvent anything just we got to keep mining uh, and as I said Product coverage will get completed. Uh, platforms you built out over the last three years, and a 70 million franchise uh, uh, with a 40 million best customers uh, is some ending this year. Uh, all we just need to do is continue to just mine those clients. So that's what gives us the confidence. Let me make a point. Uh, um, you know, uh, and I'm not. Uh, Sandy wants to say something. So uh, that I think remains tremendous opportunity uh, to uh, do it too quickly. It's a problem. Do it too slowly. It's a problem. Just at a uh, cruising altitude, growth oriented, so that we are all on the same page. Uh, don't see this to be a challenge. Uh, and mind you, I am not making a new point. In July, we made the point in AGM that we'll get to four lakh crore. So I'm not, you know, uh, that is that was three years yeah. hence. This is five years hence. And in that one year is gone. We will add this year, I've said already, 53,000 crores of balance sheet. You know, um, uh, June to March, 52, 53, between 64 to 67, and 75 to 80, uh, you, some of the numbers. As I keep telling people, it took us 15 years to get to 2 lakh crore. And it will take only 18 years for us to get to 4 lakh crore. So that's compounding, and we are very clear. We are not letting this opportunity go uh, to build a uh, um, once in a while uh, opportunity that comes our way in uh, in in building this business out. Got it. Uh, thanks, thanks, Rajiv, and uh, wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes today's Q&A session, so therefore I'll hand back over to the management team for any closing remarks. No, thank you. Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, thank you for your patience. On behalf of Morgan Stanley, that concludes today's conference call. Thank you for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.